Hey everybody, good evening. I'm Glenn Monronen. This is Flip Move. And uh, we're here with another Denton, Texas vidcast. Um, I, I think we should talk about just the dismal array of horseshit that you have to go through to get a job without a degree. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, possibly without transportation. Yeah. Uh, because it's, a, you know, do you drive? Like, do you have a vehicle? I have a broken down vehicle which needs a car repair costing several hundred dollars that I cannot currently afford. And I'm kind of in the same situation. Registration for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got like a, uh, I've got a vehicle, but it needs its inspection. Uh, it needs its registration. That's uh, it? Yeah, but it also needs a title transfer. How much does that cost? Uh, all in all, it's going to be like $194. But, like, that's not a small amount of money right now. No, it's not. But if I get a fat check and that benefits me a lot, that's kind of funny that we start podcasting with discussing this stuff. But, no, dude, it's quite possibly, uh, especially, I don't know, if we could do maybe a lot of work for Storm and he were to throw us in 20 or something. Yeah, dude, because that would benefit me a lot. All right, well, see, now, there's a, there's a very good point right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a... How come uh, carpooling is a lot easier? <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, uh, yeah. maybe carpooling is not a lot easier because, well, we don't all work at the same place. Because we haven't bothered to type in carpool.com into the Google. <laughs> There's that, too. And, and, and all of those are really, really good points, but um, <clears throat> I don't know. I just think you have to go through a lot man, mm -hmm. to, to, to try and find, you know, work. Yeah. Uh, when you need what feels like so many things, it's hard to know where to start sometimes. Yeah. It's very depressing. And the way that you apply for jobs these days is very different. Like mm. 10 years ago, you used to walk into places and I got something yeah. to say about that. Pizza Hut, if you're listening, I once applied two times in a row and I'm not even sure anybody, in fact, it got to the end of the application process and something wouldn't work and I didn't even have to apply, even though I put in all that time. Pizza Hut. It's very impersonal. <laughs> yeah, it's all so impersonal. It's I, like, you know, how do I, how do I get them to, like, how many applications are waiting in this queue? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't even know if anybody actually ever looks at your application. Yeah, and they say, well, why don't you call? And okay, someone might look at your application at that point, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're the best one in the queue either. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like there's so many people applying for jobs. Okay, uh, you you said in Denton specifically. Here's my take on it: is basically you got to already know somebody that works there that's going to go ahead. And once the hiring manager has that reference, yeah, rather I mean, it's, the then it's reference. like screw a paper application or what a computer application, or whatever. That's just somebody putting their best foot forward. We're all going to do that. We're all going to look good on paper. Yeah. Yeah. But this person saying, I know them, I vouch for them, you like me, you're going to like them. Right. That's and, a big deal here in Denton. And that, mm -hmm. Or anywhere. Yeah. I think that's just how it works. Yeah, especially these days. Yes. Um, and then, you know, not everybody can just, I mean, what if, you're, what if you have a, a a criminal record? Yeah. Like, I, I think that's, I think, I, I met this guy in uh, Louisiana recently that started this organization. They're trying to get the, the background check question removed from job apps oh, there really? because you know you 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 go to prison or whatever or go mm -hmm. to jail you do your time yeah it's you serve you your debt to society, society yes and they continue continue right. to punish you yeah you can never you get to that, stop talking don't, about it yeah. don't buy the hype you check that you're disqualified pretty much yeah put um, yourself in, in in this position say you're a you're a 40 year old manager mm -hmm. and you've got Ten applications to look mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Who are you putting at the back of the stack? Right. I've got a couple of things to say about this. I've experienced this because, <laughs> A, I have a DUI. Well, I haven't had a drink in six years, but I still have to put that down. Right. Uh, B, I had bad checks. These were my checks. I I wrote them. They were, you know, it, it, I, it was my mistake, you know. But what are they listed as since I got arrested for it, went to warrant? theft by check, like I was some enormous, you know, check ring or something, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that word theft, anytime any cash registers involved or anything, like, yeah, you're, oh, you're no, what, you want to clean houses? Oh, no, thief, no thief, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> for the rest of my life. I, I don't think that. Come on. I don't think that your criminal background is anyone else's business if you're out of jail or out right. Of I, I don't. I don't think like anybody should be able to look it up. Maybe other than the feds. Yeah. I don't really think it's any of their business either. But how do you get it completely mm -hmm. off the records, right? Well, this is another thought that I've had about you know having these problems myself, having to put these. I had one arrest, and I got arrested for the DWI and the, the bad check all in one arrest. Uh, it was 10 years ago, and I'm like, man, I have a lot of work ethic. I was a straight-A student. I just got the black marks. What if I started my own temporary workforce or whatever, and you can't join if your record's completely clean? And See, you, there now, you go. Now, you have to have been completely clean for maybe five years, but then you're 10 years. Stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, my stuff was 10 years ago, you know? <clears throat> Come on. When do I get to live it down? How long? Well, 50 right. years? When right. do I get to quit putting it on my record? Never. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. That's true. Yeah. And, and then, you know, like you said, there's the whole reference thing. Mm -hmm. Like, my uh, sister-in-law is a manager with a very popular restaurant. And she told me flat out, I never look at that stuff. Yeah, I never call those people. Oh, yeah, no, I've never record. had anybody up at dinner as a reference tell me that somebody checked on it. And, never. you know, what if you don't know, I mean, what if what if this employer wants you to be, like, super thorough, but you don't know how long ago and when exactly you worked at Dish Network and you're yeah. guessing. And, and you're lying. Check, and it's right. like, he's not, you know, he didn't work there then. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and I think, I don't know if you have this problem, but have, have you ever been, like, a shoe-in for something? And you don't get and it. And you don't get it. Yes, and you're, absolutely. You're like, why Anytime. the fuck are you not hiring me? Right. You know, you get on the phone, and they're like, yeah, we can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. I think you should be, like, legally have to be told why you're not getting that job. Right. Like, if you interviewed. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. You know, I don't know. It keeps you, I, I guess, I guess they're like, well, you know, we don't want to, like, cheat you into your next job by telling you what you're doing wrong. Or whatever. <laughs> but I, I just think that there's so much that People want to work, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, I've got a student loan that's almost done. I could go back to school, but that's now you have to get a master's. Mm -hmm. It's like a bachelor's is nothing. Yeah. So you know, I'm gonna go to school for how long? Yeah. Six years. Yeah. I'm thirty five. I've man. definitely come to the conclusion that these days, a lot of times, college. It's, it's like high school part two. It is. They're there and you're just, you get in the debt and you jump through the hoops long enough and then you get your degree. And I wish, I wish, I, I don't mind that I, I actually dropped out of high school, even though I was good at school. And uh, I wish I'd gone, worked for a little while and lived with my mom and then went to trade school. And, but, you know, how can I have known all that then? You know, hindsight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess, how is it going to, how is it going to change? Mm -hmm. what, what would need to change about it to make it more, because there's nothing fair about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, why, how come the fact that I made uh, if you add up all my years of straight A report cards in public school, it's probably like, what do you go to public school for roughly 12 years, right? Mm -hmm. It's probably about 10 and a half years, full years of straight A report cards. How come I, I'm not going to college for free, you know, full ride. Cause I'm obviously going to, if you give me a place to live and food and, and put me in college, I'm, you know, unless I see, they don't know what I, why didn't I get it done anyway? Why did what happened that I become an addict or something? You know, I don't know. When I went to college, I was being claimed as a dependent. So I couldn't get scholarships. I couldn't get financial aid. I couldn't get this, that, or the other. And the person claiming me as a dependent was like, it's not my job to pay for your schooling. Right. And the state's <laughs> going, actually, it is their job. Yeah. If you're that's that's, that's you're weird, too. That's weird, too. And, and, you know, that person's like, you just need to go out and get a full-time job. And it's like, brother, I'm going to school 21 hours yeah. this semester. Yeah, that's it, a lot. There's no room for right. a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
The last time I was going 15 hours, there, there's barely room mm-hmm. there. Yeah, I've done that. You know, and and, and I, I like education. I like learning. Mm-hmm. I, 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 oh, that's the best. I've, yeah. I've never been better at anything in my life <laughs> except guitar and going to school. How are you at, like, handling a full plate? Mm, I I didn't do so high at college. I was working full time at a McDonald's. Exactly. And that wore me, not just at McDonald's, I was just busy for a McDonald's, and it wore me the hell out. I want to concentrate on my schooling. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I don't want to, like, earn some money at the same time, but, you know, I, I don't I don't want to have to rely on that job uh, to pay for my school uh, so I can do it part-time, uh, and, and it's more manageable. Um, they just don't, I, I don't necessarily think it should be easy. I mean, things that are hard generally, you know, are good for your character and stuff, but... Maybe it's too hard. Maybe the options aren't out there for everybody. And mm-hmm. you know, what like what 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 did you do by being born wrong by being born poor? Right. Or, you know what have you. I, I just uh, I don't think that there's a very good balance to all of it. I know people out there are thinking. They're thinking, why don't you guys start your own business? Mm-hmm. Well, That's, no, duh. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, I don't have the startup capital. Exactly. Why don't you guys go out and get a loan? Yeah. Don't have the credit. Um, you know? You so, know, it would be good to have a vehicle to use for all that. <laughs> well, right. And even if you did have one, I mean, that doesn't make the credit come. Right. Yeah. 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 You need a trifecta, pretty much, of of things just to start the smallest of businesses. Yeah. And most people uh, that you know start companies, and and I come from a place that's sort of family oriented in a lot of ways. But I don't know one person who hasn't really started a business, or or one or two people took one over. But I don't know. I don't know anyone who didn't like start up a business without a stack of cash from some relative. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So you know, like to. Like Barack Obama, I, I mean, I'm not like the hugest fan anymore, but like he said, you know, if you're successful, you probably didn't get there yourself. Right. And, you know, he's right. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, you know, Bill, dude, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs walked on the hands and heads of a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, to get where they are. Mm-hmm. You know, they, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like Bill's in there. I got to get this software coded out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <Right>. I mean, <laughs> when was the last time that dude coded something behind a keyboard decades, decades, probably four decades <laughs> or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. The, and, and I don't know that people look at it that way Yeah, uh, all the time. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I've thought of that, too. If, if I did get considerably more successful, how could I go maybe to high schools or something like that and find these really outstanding kids that were the most at risk? You know, we're in the situation I was... I came from a bitter divorce, broken home, um, and I was making high grades regardless. Somebody could have taken me under their wing, and they would have had somebody to be CEO of their company and probably run it like you know as well as they or better than they could. You don't and think they that's would sit back. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. a big what if. Yeah, what if they did that for four kids? Would one of them turn out to be worth multi millions to them? You could. Yeah. You know, but then again, there's been a lot of people who, you know, I'm sure people thought were worthless to, you know, manage to, yeah, you know, pull out a win, right? You know, here and there. We'll be back with part B.